so the next uh, kind of movement is uh, functional and uh, para functional movements functional movements are usually what we do movements of the mandible when we are doing normal functions like facial expression swallowing chewing etc so swallowing has three phases oral pharyngeal and esophageal phases and chewing cycle involves mouth opening foot contact crushing then tooth contact and then uh, again mouth opening it's these are all reflexly controlled and so patients having difficulties in chewing and all will not be able to do, reproduce proper mandibular movements during jaw relation next is para functional movements these are habitual movements like uh, whistling whistle blowing nail biting etc whereas uh, there could be some form of para functional movements that are of systemic origin like neurogenic causes like bruxism bruxism is no longer caused due to dental interference it's only due to neurogenic causes apart from this mandibular movements can also be classified as movements towards the outer margin border movements and the movements within the border movements called intra border or regular movements so to record the border movements we need to visualize exactly how the mandible moves so border movements can be measured in the sagittal frontal and the horizontal plane so this is a sagittal plane view you can see and this is the frontal view so when the patient opens a mouth wide to the maximum mouth opening position and then closes back to the maximum right side and then goes back to the centric point or the centric relation or centric occlusion and then uh, they come to the left side and again go to maximum mouth opening so this kind of when we trace this path we get the shape of a shield and it's called as a shield tracing so the next thing what we are seeing is the movement of the mandible uh, in the horizontal plane so that is called as the horizontal tracing here you can see that the patient's moving to the right lateral again to the mo most protrusive point to the left lateral and back to centric relation so this produces a, a rhomboid shape tracing it's also known as the rhomboid or diamond tracing so cr is the position of centric relation and co is will be centric occlusion that is occlusion or maximum intercuspid position so when the patient tries to move the mandible forward and backward you will notice that the incisors hit each other so the teeth will have to move a little bit downward and then go back to maximum intercuspid position and then to cr from cr it can go on either sides just remember co means centric occlusion maximum intercuspid position is also centric occlusion if the cr and co are the same when you see from the side you get a beak tracing the terminal hinge is the one which was shown that is the pure hinge moment and then rotation after translation so you see the closure of the mandible also occurs around two axis of rotation then during protrusion the incisors hit so it slightly opens up and then you go to protrusive point and then you close so this is how the tracings are recorded and when you combine the player tracings on all the three planes you will get what is called as a postal envelope of motion which he proved in 1953 and uh, this uh, shape of this envelope of motion is known as a swiss banana so with that uh, here you can see that uh, the beak tracing when you see from the side the shield tracing from the front and the diamond tracing from the top this is the shield tracing from the front and you can see the diamond tracing from the top all these three structures together is called the porcel's swiss banana porcel introduces in 1953